One of the things we learnt early on while making games was that it was very time consuming using a map editor or 3D software on a PC to place all the objects and creatures into a level, but that's how everybody did it at the time. Usually a spline, which is a collection of points linked by lines, would be drawn in a 3D software package or map editor, where each of the points would represent the position of a creature, a collectible, or the path a creature will follow and so on. This would be saved and then processed through a conversion utility. Then it would be included in the data for the build and the game would be started. This would allow us to see where everything was and what needed moving. To move something, it would be tweaked in the software package and the whole process repeated. Very time consuming with such precision things like creature placement and moving platforms. So our idea was to build the level editor right into the game. Let's have a look at the one I wrote for Sonic 3D. You can easily move around the level using the D-pad, which gives us a good overview of where everything is. Pressing Start opens the menu, and pressing B takes us to the first object that was placed in the level, in this case an object called Spike B. We can see that the next object is called Hunter, and again pressing B takes us right over to it. The third object is the spiked ball orbiting the hunter, and in fact every hunter we place needs to have a spiked ball placed next, so it can make it orbit around it. These are two linked objects behaving as one creature. Let's have a look at a scouter, and then a spring. We can see there's all kinds of objects placed in the level as we scroll through the list. So next, let's select an object and replace it with a different one. Once placed, we can drag it around the level to position it wherever we want. But you can see here that its graphic is corrupting. This is because there is only a certain amount of memory available for on-screen objects, and so we have to be very careful to organise the memory and objects in such a way as they don't exceed memory and corrupt. Moving it down here away from the hunters should stop the corruption. Now the shadow that represents our cursor also behaves like Sonic as far as the creatures are concerned, so when we move the cursor near the scouter, it follows it, but when we move it further away, the scouter slows down and just patrols its area. Move back close and it seeks it out again. Let's place a few more objects. Now you can see that the pillar doesn't look quite right. That's because there are only a few colour palettes available, just four at any given time. If we go to a section in the editor called VRAM, this lets us change the attributes of the object, such as draw priority and what palette to use. But it doesn't look like any of the four palettes we have on this level work for it. This is because this is an object from Rusty Ruin and uses the palette of the background scenery from that level. You can see that this bigger spiked ball from the same level has a similar problem. Let's try a crocodile. Nearly, but not quite right. What about a snow mound? Yes, that just about works. I'll place a few more types. So looking at the VRAM section, the first four digit number holds the video memory location for the creature as well as the palette and draw priority. The next number defines what type of flickies it drops, if any. The F number seems to be unused and the S represents how much video memory the creature will take. He looks familiar. Let's give him a friend. Hmm, memory clash. So they both take quite a chunk of memory, so we need to move them further apart. Tweak his palette and Close enough. Now I'm just going to rerun the editor 
and I forced a palette change just for this next part. I'm going to change this now red spiky ball into a different creature. Someone sent me this image of a very early screenshot showing a red crab that isn't in the game. Well, I went hunting and found it hidden away in some old data. Now, its animation is playing backward, so his feet are slipping. So we fix that in the CRAM, or Creature RAM. This is a set of general purpose variables that every object has access to and can use however they like. In this case, this variable represents whether to play the animation forward or backward. So if we reverse its state, the animation plays correctly. The first two numbers of CRAM in this case represent how far the crab can move across the map side to side. So by changing the numbers we can keep the crab in a given patrol area. I just programmed this behaviour as an example. I have no idea what the crab did originally as it never got used. Well, that's given it a bit of room to move around, and that brings us to the end of this particular video. Thanks for watching.